We've got uh, Jay Gilgan coming in as Rudy. Can you tell us a little bit about that character? Um, well, I don't want to give away um, his superpower because um, that's sort of a key part of his character and who he is. Um, but, you know, when, when, when Robert left, we, we obviously needed kind of a new funny man because um, uh, Nathan, uh, Robert's character, was a source of a lot of the humour. And uh, sort of, you know, I think we've got a great new um, funny guy in Rudy. Um, he's sort of fitted into the gang unbelievably well. And actually anyone who's seen the show um, says they don't miss Nathan. And, and, and it's like, he, you know, that, that he's sort of quite natural that he's gone. Um, it's difficult to say too much about Rudy's character without revealing his superpower, but we reveal it very quickly in the first episode, so people have only got a few minutes to wait. Were you quite keen to make him quite a different character from Nathan, even if he is still the funny man? Yeah, I mean, he's, 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 he's much more emotional than, than Nathan ever was. You know, Nathan had this kind of Teflon ability that nothing hurt him, and that was always part of his, his character. Um, and that's why we chose immortality as his power. Whereas Rude is much more emotional, um, feels things much more, gets hurt, gets much more involved. Um, and so he's, he, he, even though he has sort of, you know, and, and his humour is different, it, it's perhaps not quite as sort of um, crazy as Nathan's was. It's, it's a sort of different brand of humour. Is there an over, overriding storyline this time, like with the, more of the super hoodie, that kind of thing? Um, yeah, there's a couple of serial strands which uh, run across the entire series. Um, again, we, we very much go with sort of story of the week because that's that's what's worked. But across the, across the series, there are various sort of you know, sort of smaller or larger storylines which play across all eight episodes. Um, and you know, and it's more or less a direct pickup of of um, where we left off with series two. And so obviously, the, you know, the, the Super D and um, Alicia Simon sort of nexus is still um, part of the series. Did you relish the chance to give them all new powers? Yeah, um, it was actually really hard. Um, having come up with the idea to give them new power to sort of reinvigorate the series, and we, we kind of felt we'd come to the end of the road with some of the powers. Um, then coming up with powers which worked in terms of where their characters were at and you know, we could achieve in our budget, it's actually really hard. But you know, once we did it, um, it sort of generated new stories, and you know, there's a great uh, new story involving Curtis's. Um, new power in episode two, and you know, and, and we just wouldn't be able to do those stories unless we had new power. So yeah, it was exciting, but it was a challenge as well. I obviously, you can't say too much, but can you give us any teasers about the powers? Will they will they be helpful? Um... Um, no, they're never really helpful in this. It's sometimes they're helpful, but um, it, it's that thing that we always play the idea: is is it good to have a power, or is it a curse? And again during the course of the series. Sometimes it's helpful in small situations, sometimes it gets them into more trouble, sometimes it's a real pain in the arse. And we very much play with, with that again across the series. Because even though they've chosen these powers, if you think about where their minds were at, where they chose them, the powers reflect what they were feeling or what they wanted. So again, it's an extension of their characters and, and that's very much put in a part of the show. Is that it now or will they change their powers again in the future? Um, well, at least one of them changes their power again during the course of the series. Um, yeah, I think there will be changes in powers, and you know, who knows? I'm, I'm just in the process of um, sort of brainstorming uh, series four, and uh, you know, nothing's set in stone, so um, you know, people have to tune in and find out. What kind of adversaries can we expect in the new series? Um, uh, all kinds, from psycho teenage girls to Nazis and zombies. So there's a full sort of gamut of um, adversaries. And, um, you know, again, I think it's sort of, you know, hopefully sort of, you know, there's a wide variety. And we try to, you know, do sort of different genres in different episodes. So there's a sort of good horror zombie episode and there's a sort of thriller episode involving Nazis, you know, and then there's some sort of more emotional um, sort of um, lower key sort of stories, which are sort of more personal to our characters.